Here on our own ranch and our little farm down the road, we have used the sheep to clean up the garden area after the end of the growing season. We've used them for maintenance in our orchard where we've been growing olives, apples, peaches, cherries, plums, apricots. Um, the sheep are pretty good. You got you can't put them into a place where there's um, young trees because they will bark the younger trees. Once the more mature bark is formed on the trees, you don't have any problem with that. The worst they'll do is just rub on them a little bit. Um, same thing with grapes. Uh, the most vulnerable component with grapes under drip irrigation is how the irrigation system is set up. Last two years um, we have been asked to provide weed control at the Native Seed Search Farm in Patagonia, Arizona. Uh, that farm had been used to grow out the seed collection for Native Seed Search, a um, 501c3 nonprofit organization founded in Tucson, Arizona. They have spent a tremendous amount of time and energy uh, collecting native and indigenous crop varieties from native and indigenous people. And it's an incredibly important collection. That farm um, had, an, had a real advantage for us in that it had a, a deer proof fence, allegedly deer proof, which means a fence that was six or seven feet tall, uh, field fencing, but with a relatively small mesh size and uh, so we had very little in the way of predator issues. We lost a couple of sheep. Uh, we had two, f two fields that we would rotate between, so not the greatest for a highly evolved rotation. One of the tenants on the farm is Borderlands Restoration Network that is another 501c3 nonprofit headquartered in Patagonia that works primarily with um, high school age youth um, in summer programs doing uh, hands-on uh, watershed restoration work but they also operate some greenhouses and grow out a significant collection of native plants to be used for um, ecologically appropriate site restoration where there's been a disturbance. And one of the things our sheep did is to keep the greenhouse and grow out areas free of non-native plants and weed plants and provide um, an all-natural means of weed control without using herbicides, without uh, taking extreme measures which would cause soil fertility loss. And instead, just a day-by-day -day gentle eating those delectable, scrumptious little green tumbleweeds and other kinds of annuals and some biennials and even a few perennials. And they do a good job. And be, the fact that we've been asked back and thanked for our work makes me feel pretty good. We've also done some weed control at a solar farm uh, north of Wilcox, Arizona, called the Red Horse Solar Facility. It's operated by a company, I believe they're a California company, um, under contract for Tucson Electric Power. It's two sections or about 1,250 acres of solar panels with rangeland grass growing underneath. In the early days of this particular facility, they had contracted out with a landscape maintenance crew 
to mow the grasses and weeds underneath the solar panels. Invariably, these the, the mowing machines that were being used by this company were essentially skid steer tractors with a mower deck mounted on the front and operated by the operator inside of a little uh, single seat cage. So that in theory, the operator has a really good view of what's being mowed and where the mowing deck is going and so forth, so that they don't inadvertently chop off uh, a high voltage wire or, or power line. Unfortunately, rangeland is characterized by uneven terrain and rough surfaces and the presence of rocks and various other things like that. And so almost every time the mowing crew came out to do routine maintenance, they shattered solar panels and shut down portions of the array and cost the company, the managing company, significant income and significant cost for repair of the damage. They became pretty open to the idea of using sheep for grazing management, um, for weed control, because sheep don't generally throw rocks. Um, they don't generally stand on their hind legs. So they definitely and specifically said no goats. Sheep are fine, but no goats because they were worried and, and the experience had, had occurred on other solar farms apparently where goats would stand on their hind legs and nibble the coating, the rubber coating on the wires and then be electrocuted but would also shut down the array and again cause similar losses and interruption of power production and so forth. So our experience with uh, sheep at this particular solar panel was a mixed bag. It was, uh, the sheep did a great job of managing the vegetative growth. That was not an issue. If anything, we could have used more sheep because 1,250 acres was quite a bit for the, I don't know, we had maybe 400 head of sheep on this outfit at that time. Um, the problem for us was a couple of other things. One was that we experienced very high predator losses because while this facility was fenced with an eight foot high chain link fence, an industrial quality chain link fence with concertina on top of it, there were places where the bottom of the fence was well over a foot off the ground easy passage for animals to come in or go out. Now we didn't lose sheep from them leaving. It was uninvited diners that came in after dark. The four-legged kind that we've already discussed. And the fact that with sheep somewhat scattered over two square miles, um, the Guard dogs were hard pressed to keep a good eye on everybody. And because we were not, this was a hour and a half away from home and we weren't camping out with the sheep. We did not have all night uh, guarding. We didn't have a facility to pen the sheep at night. Um, we, we had huge losses, lost 90 head of sheep or, or thereabouts. Um, we kept asking for the managers of the solar facility to take a grader and go around the perimeter fence and, and grade an earthen berm up on the low places where there was a gap below the bottom of the fence. And they kept saying, oh, we're on it. We'll be doing that soon. And the fact of the matter is, they never did. And they never offered to make good on our losses. And ultimately, because we didn't have a written contract with them, um, they dismissed the validity of our claim 
for compensation for the loss of the sheep. So we had a very expensive lesson learned. One of the things I guess that I have come away from that experience with is a pretty firm conviction that there's some room for cross-pollination between the realms of electrical engineering and animal science or animal behavior that in the design of future solar facilities um, consideration for the needs of livestock management who can be a, a very cost-effective way of maintaining these solar production facilities um, would be a real benefit and that means being able to subdivide the solar facility into smaller paddocks, maybe six or eight or ten smaller paddocks, um, and with buried water lines so that we could move our water around. Sometimes part of the problem was the feed was at one end of the facility and the water was at the other end of the facility and the sheep were ambushed going back and forth between where the food was and where the water was. We would have to take a hard look at where we might go in the future for managing weeds and vegetation in an industrial site like a solar facility. I love the idea. We have personally, I are, we've been off grid for almost 30 years. We're powered entirely by solar and wind here, and uh, we're pretty committed to that, you know, um, what some people call alternative energy. At the same time, we were strictly prohibited from subdividing the solar facility or creating paddocks even with portable electric fence because it was felt by the company that it would interfere with their ability to come in and efficiently and, and effectively do their routine maintenance. And so we get that, I understand that. Um, at the same time, either, I mean, I think getting multiple uses out of the same piece of ground is a direction that we're gonna see most advocates of sustainable, um, life ways uh, pursuing. You'll see crop farms with solar panels at a certain elevation above the fields providing a mix of shade and sun thus providing some better water conservation and allowing for the equivalent of two crops to be harvested. One in terms of electrical energy and another in, in terms of food or fiber and um, by th throwing livestock, a livestock maintenance crew into that mix for weed control, uh, now we can have a plant yield, a meat yield, a wool yield, an electrical yield, uh, maybe a plant fiber yield like cotton or hemp. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting and pretty intriguing and certainly something that I hope that we can be a part of in the future. But like all, all things, when you're one of the pioneers or one of the ones that are out there doing the, uh, the new things that early adopters do, you sometimes have some very harsh lessons and harsh confrontation with the reality that you didn't quite anticipate.